Hello. In this, um, these two little lectures, we're going to discuss the auditory system, which is the anatomy of the ear and auditory system, vestibular system. We're going to talk about hearing and balance. So the ear, most of us think of just the, the stuff that's sticking out on the side, but um, there's more to it than that. So the ear is divided into three main regions. You have the external ear out here. Um, where we put our earrings and stuff. Um, that is uh, known as the pinna, um, P-I-N-N-A, or uh, external ear. And it collects sound waves. And those sound waves um, are going to be discussed a little bit later. The middle ear uh, is a, an, um, an air-filled space that uh, ha contains your ossicles. And then the inner ear our internal ear is where the cochlea semicircular canals are, and these are where the sensory apparatus that transduce vibration or motion into something that we can sense. That's where those uh, those uh, apparatus are. So again, the external ear is the auricle or pinna, and it's made out of elastic cartilage, which is a good thing because if not, um, it would break and it would look terrible. Um, and then the external auditory canal is this part that leads from the surface into the temporal bone. And it is bounded kind of by the external ear and you can see the opening on the side. Um, and its me medial boundary is going to be the tympanic membrane. Oh, and this is where of course um, you have ceruminous glands, the glands that uh, make earwax. So again, the middle ear is an air-filled cavity. It's one of the few places in your body that you have very much air, except, of course, for your lungs. And it is where um, the vibrations that come in through uh, the external ear are uh, begin to be transduced into sound. We have our auditory ossicles, which are auditory bones, which are found in here. We have three. There's the malleus the incus, and the stapes, also known as the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. And these take those uh, waves of uh, vibration that are in the air and then are going to transmit them through the tympanic membrane, through the ossicles, and then into the cochlea, which is going to transduce those um, vibrations um, from a vibration in the air to a vibration in the bones, to a vibration in fluid, and that vibration of the fluid is what we're going to turn into a neural signal that we perceive as sound. And here are those tiny bones. Here's the malleus and the stapes and the incus. And I guess this looks kind of like a hammer. I'm not sure which end is the handle. Um, the stapes definitely looks like a stirrup. And the anvil, the, the incus kind of does look like a, an anvil on this aspect. And again, um, they are connected by synovial joints. And you can have something called um, conduction deafness. If um, there's arthritis or some kind of change in the joints between these muscles that, um, that prevents them from vibrating fully. There are also two muscles in this middle ear area. And these are really important for um, dampening sharp, um, sharp, loud noises um, to protect the, the ear from, from too much vibration. And the tensor tympani muscle here um, is this number four. It attaches to the malleus um, and uh, helps dampen vibrations. There's also a stapedius muscle that attaches, it's not um, pictured in this diagram, but it'll attach to the stapes. And again, that will dampen vibration so that it doesn't go from the ossicles into the cochlea. And it specifically is gonna protect those hair cells. Another image that, or another uh, structure that you can see in this diagram is here number three, which is the um, auditory tube, uh, also known as the Beringo tympanic tube, formerly known as the eustachian tube. And this is a channel 
that connects your pharynx, i.e. the back of your, your throat, with your middle ear cavity and it allows you to equilibrate pressure. So if you're going up on an elevator that goes really fast or when you're taking off or landing in an airplane and the, the pressure differential changes between the external and internal, you you can open your mouth and kind of stretch that pharyngotympanic tube and then equalize that pressure um, on either side of your eardrum so that it doesn't burst or yeah, which hurts. So how do we hear? Basically, um, vibrations in, the, in our environment, the sound of my voice, um, the sound of a truck going by outside or um, a dog barking creates waves, vibrations in the air. They are gathered by the external ear or the oracle or the pinna. Um, ours are not great, um, but if you think about, the, if you seen a cat or a fox move their ears to um, help catch sound, they're much better at it than we are. And that vibration goes from the air to the tympanic membrane. It causes the tympanic membrane to vibrate, which then sets up a vibration in the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. And the stapes attaches to a structure called the oval window which is the beginning, the opening of the cochlea. Now, I'm not going to ask you um, about how many kilohertz are uh, detected in what part of the cochlea, but I can tell you, and just for your information, that the bottom line is that different parts of the cochlear membranes have different stiffnesses. And so those that difference in stiffness um, will determine um, what speed of vibration will get that uh, membrane to move. And then that is interpreted by your nervous system where that signal is coming from as to um, what the frequency is. So again, the stapes then takes that um, physical vibration from, um, from air physical to, uh, to the bones, to the fluid, of the cochlea. And when the fluid in the cochlea moves, that's what is going to cause a bend in our hair cells. And that's what makes sound. So the cochlea is a spiral filled chain, is a spiral chamber, spiral chamber. It looks like a little snail. Um, and when you cut through it and open it up, you'll see these um, three channels. This is where the fluid is. So the fluid is moving through these channels, <clears throat> excuse me, and it causes vibration in this structure, which is the organ of Corti. And this is the structure that changes that vibration that's now in the fluid into something that we perceive as sound. So the organ of Corti has three very important structures, a basilar membrane, which is on the bottom, hair cells, um, and they're called hair cells because they have stereocilia, stereo cilia, also known as microvilli. And then there's also a tectorial membrane, which doesn't move. And here is an actual picture of it. You can see the bone. It's in the bony labyrinth. Here's the whole cochlea cut kind of just straight down the middle. And then here's those chambers I was talking about. And then this is the organ of Corti. This is your basilar membrane or basilar membrane here. This is your tectorial membrane up here. And then these are your hair cells. So what happens is that when that the sound comes in the ear, through the bones, and now is in the fluid, that fluid causes the basilar membrane to move. Okay, so the basilar membrane will start to vibrate. The tectorial membrane does not move, okay? And so what happens then as this um, basilar membrane moves, it forces the hair cells up against the tectorial membrane and they bend. And it's that bending of those stereocilia or microvilli that then are picked up, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, causes changes in this cell that are then transmitted 
into um, a neural signal. So basically, it's kind of like if you were jumping on your bed um, and somebody lowered the ceiling, then you'd be jumping, jumping, that's great. And then if somebody lowers the ceiling, you jump and your head would go sideways because um, you'd hit the ceiling. And that kind of bending is what's happening to the tops of those hair cells. And that changes the ionic concentrations and stuff in that hair cell, which then is um, picked up by a sensory neuron, a primary um, sensory neuron that carries that information back into the um, central nervous system. And this is what those hair cells look like in a scanning electron micrograph that has been false colored because scanning electron micrographs are all grayscale, but this is what they look like. And so you can see that they're sitting here on a basement membrane. If these bend over, then it cause, causes those, those um, microvilli or, or stereocilia to bend. And so this is what you need to know. Um, what are the three divisions? of the ear and what are their functions? What's what's happening there? What are the three ossicles and what is the, their order from the most external to the most internal? What two muscles are in the middle ear and what are their functions? You need to be able to name those three structures of the organ of Cordy um, that we just talked about. And then describe the path of vibrations from the environment through the external ear, through the middle ear, and then how do they get, how do those vibrations get translated into the hair cells? And lastly, I'd like you to remember um, and be able to tell me what two areas of your deep head, deep skull um, areas do, uh, does your uh, pharyngotympanic tube connect? Once you have all of that stuff, um, you know, solid in your head, you're ready for your quiz and you're ready for your exam. Thanks for your attention.